Uh, so, hi everyone, I'm Mark Boyd from Programmable Web. So then this afternoon, uh, to start with, we've got a, f a few speakers. First of all, just presenting how they've um, uh, shepherded an API strategy through their organisation or with their partners uh, or customers. And then uh, we'll open up the floor for questions as well. So thinking through all, all that you've heard of, to, uh, all that you've heard today around um, uh, how APIs are disrupting business models, how they're creating opportunities for new markets and for monetizing uh, a business's digital uh, data assets. Uh, we'll be looking at all of those sorts of things in some real world examples. So first of all though, we'll, we'll get each of the uh, panel members to just briefly share a little bit of the API story that they've had with their uh, own agencies. So we've got Yua Kim from BizNord, uh, Kenneth from uh, Post Nord, yeah, yeah, right. uh, and Travis from Tubo. So, uh, Joachim, do you want to start by telling us you're you're mostly working with internal APIs? Yeah, within BizNode, yes, we we um, we have a long history of of integrating against our customers. Our customers have have for decades uh, asked us to to integrate against their services. So we don't only do our own web portals and, and clients, but we also integrate against our, our customers' systems. So we've been doing this since the uh, mid-80s. Um, and thus, the, the business model during the first two decades in business history hasn't really changed that much. Um, we have different ways of, of, uh, of getting paid for, for the information we provide to our customers. Um, but, of course, we also work with, with APIs internally when we develop new services. So everything we, we have internally from, from data sources and services like that are, are on uh, APIs. Now, I, I need also to tell you about a little bit of BizNode history, because if we are looking at, at Sweden, we used to be 18 brands, 18 companies, with at least 18 different mm -hmm. strategies on doing things. Uh, 18 different platforms for data and different platforms for portals and security and things like that. So during the last 15, 18 months, we're doing a massive restructuring of the whole company. So the 18 brands in Sweden are turning into one BizNode. Or the, the 70 brands and companies in 19, company, uh, 19 uh, markets in Europe are turning into one BizNode. So now we're doing doing this transformation and will bring up all these different uh, platforms and technologies and of course also in there there's an API strategy which will reach beyond what we, we used to have. Uh, what's the starting point then for you? Is it that you're working with internal departments uh, and helping them identify where they, where they need to find a commonality or uh, when they're sort of working, when they're turning from their independent sort of company with their own brands into the one uh, organisation? Do you have to help them shepherd how to make that, how, they, how to make their data speak to other parts of the organisation? Or do you start with the business strategy and then identify what the goals are in the business strategy that relate to them and therefore where the APIs come into play? We, we do both at the same time. <laughs> we have to. It's like changing the engines of the airplane in midair. Uh, but still, we have to do that. We, 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 the, the business strategy is not that different from what we used to have, because BizNode was there the first 20 years as, as well. So as a holding company, we had our business strategy set. Um, and then we, cons we consolidate all our data uh, and, and services to, to, to one platform. And, and uh, so, so we're doing both at the same time, as you say. Okay, thanks. Kenneth, you've helped uh, steer an API strategy through PostNord. Particularly, we were talking a little bit earlier uh, in the break about the track and trace uh, and their use of APIs. Do you want to uh, share a little bit about that story with us? Yeah, I, I, I don't know if you know PostNord. Uh, we have just recently changed name from Posten, which was the, 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 the name we used on the market in Sweden before. So PostNord is the kind of mother company for Posten and Post Denmark. And I'm working with the parcel side, a new company called PostNord Logistics. And I'm the guy that actually knows about nothing about APIs. Uh, so because I 
come yes. from yeah, I can come from <laughs> from a company that was founded in 1635 something and we are kind of have a, a, a long tradition but not uh, within this area we have a few APIs on the market uh, it's it's kind of um, uh, pilot that got stuck we had it's it's bad we have a bad quality on the apis they are not thought through there is no development support so we realized we needed to do something uh, with those apis it's it's for instance our track and trace uh, apis that you use if you have a partial income and partial for for from any e-commerce site that you use so we have, have just started a, a big work on on trying to get serious with, with the APIs and uh, on that way also figuring out what that means. What can we publish on, on the internet? What, what do the customers need really from, from the data we do have? Um, so that's kind of one big learning curve for us uh, that we are right in the middle of right now. And at the same time, we're also looking at APIs for internal use. Uh, we, we, I have learned that um, SOA failed and now API is the new future for connecting internal systems. That's the other learning curve that we are working with right now. So that's me. Great, thanks. Uh, and Travis, do you want to talk a little bit about how you work with s some of your customers around uh, helping them identify where, the pro where their first API opportunity is? Sure. So when we meet with our customers, oftentimes we, uh, our entire objective is to help them uh, build a secure API platform. And so talking to them about the open standards that exist, that uh, are deployed, um, that are reliable and trustworthy, that they can uh, comfortably build on to, to manage the risks associated with opening up their data through a platform. And what we do with our customers is we actually help them put together a comprehensive strategy that lasts many, many years, and then start to tie that to different projects that, that they have going and, uh, uh, and are, are working on so that they can begin to get benefit from their uh, API platform right away, and then grow that and expand on that platform by launching maybe one API and getting parts of the security apparatus put in place. Uh, launching a second API and, and developing that. So really what, what we're doing with our customers is kind of helping them put together the strategy and then uh, tactically begin implementing it project by project. How, for all of you, how uh, willing is uh, the very, well, in your case, the external partners, but the internal uh, liaison partners that you have uh, for our other two panellists, how uh, willing are they to go down the API road or is there a big reluctance about um, the what sharing data will mean? Yeah, I sure. think in, in general for, for big corporations like mine, uh, I've been struggling for years uh, with the question, what should be kept secret in the data? I mean, traditionally from an IT perspective in a big corporation, everything is secret. Everything should be boxed in and locked in and you're not supposed to publish anything. Uh, we need to rethink that. First, because there's too much data. We cannot protect everything. That's, that's the first thing. But also we need to be able to share. We need to be able to, to, uh, um, to figure out what is actually worth protecting. Mm. We haven't done that yet. We are in the process of trying to learn that. But the, the reflex in, in corporations like mine is that we can't. It's a business secret. Mm. Yeah, I agree. That that's that's the the same thing for us. Uh, I'd say it's it's you you have a reluctancy, and I think you you have to you have to take it step by step. When you get so far that what you, you're talking about, then you you've gone far. Uh, it's all it's about education. Mm -hmm. When I started talking about open APIs or APIs in general, or rather open APIs like four or five years ago, I, I had to wear a hard hat or or a helmet because that was kind of not what people wanted to hear about. Uh, now, now things are, are completely different. Uh, but it's all about education and, and hanging in there. And, and, uh, and you, you find your like-minded uh, people in the, in the organization, and you make sure you, you, you have them on board. And then we have the stakeholders that you also have to make sure are on board and know what this is. It's, it's nothing about free. It's nothing about insecure. It's nothing about... It's... it's we can't, uh, as the, the Brian Solis um, uh, quote earlier today, uh, we can't keep up by ourselves this pace. We have to make sure that our assets are used in the most optimal way. Mm -hmm. and, and that means we have to let 
go of control. And, and I think that uh, we need to ask our, ourselves, like, what business are we in? Are, are we in the, uh, yeah, exactly, what is our, our product? What is our, our, our core? And like the, the Pearson example I gave in, in my talk, I was mentioning that um, kind of comparing it to a manufacturing company that is producing, um, oh, I don't know, like plywood or, or something like that, or maybe even furniture. And they just, they produce sawdust as an offspring or an offput of their, of their core business, but that's not their core. But if they can make money from that still, then they get a new revenue stream. And really, I think that the thing that needs to be secret and kept private and definitely secured is that core competence, uh, that core information. But that other stuff, by opening that up, if it's not a, as uh, critical to the, the livelihood of the company, um, or if it, uh, for other reasons, we can open it up securely knowing that it, it, it's kept safe. We get that new revenue, that new possibility, which I think is, is a fantastic opportunity that helps us uh, not have to wear such a hard helmet anymore, right? Because we're all in our own lives seeing the, the benefits of the openness with iPhones and, and tablets and what we can do in, in our personal lives. And we want that now in, in businesses and it's kind of shifting uh, what organizations are, are comfortable with. And then of course, but of course you have to have your, your data catalog in place. Mm -hmm. and, and for us, coming from a very distributed group of companies, um, we need to just collect all data. What do we have? And uh, some, some data sets, I mean, everything that our customers today integrate against, of course, that should be made available in some way. But then there's a lot of exhaust data, for instance, mm. logs yeah, and stuff photos. like that. That's ours. Mm. We, we build stuff uh, out of that internally, but, but, I mean, we shouldn't let that data go. Mm. Can I get a sense from the room, how many people are here who, uh, whose responsibility in their business will be that they have to shepherd through an API strategy? Or who, and who is interested in being here from that? Is, do any of you guys have any questions as far as uh, uh, some of the stumbling blocks that you're meeting or you expect to meet? Is it, w w are there some of the first questions you get around, um, oh, we can't do that, what about the security of the data? or? What, what are some of the concerns for uh, your business, uh, the people that you're speaking to in your business when you're trying to talk up an API strategy? Anyone? What's the business value? How do you how do you guys um, uh, argue the business value of uh, even the internal APIs? That's a huge problem for for for. Uh, for me, because we, we see uh, APIs kind of something. It started with a phone, maybe, or a letter in my case, that you actually had a contact with the customer through a phone line. And then came EDI, and that was kind of phone, but you didn't have to phone. And now, from a business perspective, there is no API now. So they, they kind of view it as only a kind of communication to a customer. We have to... I think the journey is quite long to realize that the data and the APIs is a product in itself and needs to be treated like a product and not like a communication line. So that's, um, I think, that, that, takes some, that takes some work. Mm -hmm. Sure, I, it's easier for, for people working with APIs and working with smaller startup companies and, and, and living in, in, in the uh, kind of new internet world to realize that. But I think people are starting to, because everyone is having an iPhone or an Android phone, and you can see some of the effects coming there. It, it's, it, it has to be business-driven all the time. Although it's hard to calculate uh, ROI on an API, we should decide that anything we build should be built with an API and nothing else. We should, we should just not once again, do something that can only be reused once. So get that in place, and then you will see the benefits of having an open API. It's, it's, it's kind of easy, it sounds easy, but, but you need that decision being made. Is that, is that one of the internal par uh, champions that you try to find, is like those, those people who are having to do the same repetitive task with the data each time because there isn't an API, and then getting them on board with the idea? Is that, w would that be one of your... Channels? Those are the champs, of course, yes. And we have the, the brilliant developers we heard, heard about earlier today as well. They, the, the, I mean, they refuse to do stuff that's only reusable once or not reusable at all. Uh, so, 
so it, it moves from both directions. It's both strategy and IT. Mm. Uh, although the IT may, may not have the business perspective of things, and then we have the strategy coming from the other direction and, and making sure that it will connect. And, and I think one of the important things for us who know about APIs to keep in mind also is that the business might be saying, we need to do such and such. That they're not going to say API, they might just say mobile, or they might just say uh, more frictionless integration with partners or something like that. And we, knowing about APIs, recognize like, aha, what they're saying is they need an API. And then saying, okay, well, th there's this the strategy around mobility or the strategy around uh, integration or maybe even just a project that we can tap into and kind of piggyback the API strategy uh, program into that and start to get some wins and show that there's business value uh, in opening up and to then, you know, after a project is, is done to say, like, look, how we were able to do this is in fact through an API, and this is what an API is, and it's already producing benefits and value to the company. Is that, is that something you guys would recommend for those who are trying to just get started with an API strategy in their business, is maybe just call it an integration strategy or something and use that as the Trojan horse and then down the track say, oh, the horse is powered by APIs, you know, once, they're, once they've seen the efficiency benefits or something. Is that, would that be one technique? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I would necessarily hide it, but uh, I would definitely try to piggyback onto that so I could get their budget. And, uh, I, don't think, I don't think there's a problem with the word API in itself. Uh, it could be a problem with understanding what it could be. So mm -hmm. if, you, if you understand it like you probably do, and, and um, if you have a job like mine, it's actually kind of a business development role to, to get your companies to understand what they could use APIs for or what they could produce, what kind of services could be produced mm. based on APIs. You, I mean, you couldn't, you can't um, um, think that the management of a, of a trade company or whatever uh, would know what kind of possibilities lie in, in the use of APIs. So mm. that's, that's kind of an education task for, for IT people. Mm. Mm. But then to be able to point back to a, a project that's been successfully delivered and executed and you, you have a, a more receptive audience to say, yeah. you know, th and this was an API, and this is how we were able to do that, and to get the, the product owner of, or the project manager together uh, with you to kind of deliver that, and your, your API program could, could take some larger steps forward. But you, you can also steal from other companies. I mean, you can point to, to other companies mm -hmm. and what they have done and say, this is what I mean, this is what mm -hmm. you could do with API. Yeah. yeah. So and nowadays, I mean, in the early days, we only could point at consumer examples mm -hmm. like Netflix and Facebook and Twitter and things like that. Nowadays, we have lots of B2B examples as well. Yeah. Well, I mean, we have uh, DMB Direct and we have, I mean, there's tons of Hoovers and, and things like that. So, so uh, which makes it much easier to, to argument for this. Yep. So a quick shameless plug, you can actually look on Programmable Web for some of those examples as far as if you're looking for, if you need a uh, case study or a business example of how they've implemented an API strategy or made the links, then uh, we've got an increasing number there so that you can use that as some of your source material to sell internally. Who else? Has anyone got a question for the panel? Who are we? Yeah. When we say we, what roles do you got, what what positions do you hold that um, project give manager, you the project manager, yeah. architect, product owner? Mm. Yep. Then we have developers asking for this. Why don't we have this more? And then we have business developers. I mean, well, you mentioned that, but but um, it could be anyone. But but. Uh, but I agree that those are the three most important roles. I think link, I'm, I'm a CIO, and I'm kind of the link between business development and IT. So that's a good position to be in if you want to listen to the demands and try to, to deliver them in a smart way. Yeah, I, I have a question regarding uh, how to choose between uh, profit from the IPI or actually making the software yourself. So how do you think about that? If you should do the application that used the API or if you should let somebody else do that and profit from the API instead? 
I think it can go either way. I mean, once you have that API, you to build that mobile application, you open up the possibility to make money through access. So if, if you want to have the mobile application, you're going to need the API anyway. Um, but, but now you have choices. Um, and one of the great things about the API, if you can put a business model around that that's sustainable or providing some other indirect benefit, uh, you can capitalize and take advantage of outside innovation, uh, outside resources, uh, which could be open up all sorts of new possibilities that you're currently not even thinking of. So, uh, but but like I was saying, you know, just getting that mobile app might be a way toward an API strategy or an API product portfolio uh, to kind of get on the field or get out there. I think from my perspective, we, we are get going out with, with the APIs um, to external developers because we want you to use PostNode to send your parcels. So we want to earn the money in the, in the base um, industry, not on the APIs as kind of the first step at least. And then because we don't know where we could, how we could earn money on the APIs yet. I think that, that we, um, I mean, knowing data is, is important to us. Just having data is not enough. Uh, we, we have lots of data. We, we have government data and, and other authority or data from other authorities. And, and uh, just, just having access to data, like the open data session yesterday talked about PSI directive and things like that. Um, that's good. PSI directive is good, but, but just having data is not enough. So we think that building services on our data and services uh, using APIs that we provide, uh, I think still we, we, we will excel in, in doing the best stuff that we can come up with. But by making it public and making it available, things can happen that we would never imagine. Mm. And we could also see that, that people exploring our data, not having the B2B perspective that we have, could open up totally new uh, fields of opportunities. Mm -hmm. How much of that do you have to show um, your internal people? Like, do you, do you guys have to do the mapping yourselves as far as, first of all, mapping where all of the data exists within your business, and then from there identifying or at least having a couple of examples or ideas in your back pocket as far as where the monetization opportunities are or where an external developer could create something innovative with your data sources? How far down the road do you have to have that um, ready to be able to um, bring out of your toolkit when you're working internally? I'd say for me personally, the, the, it's obvious that, that uh, the benefits of going open, but when I have when arguing for for implementing something, I need to show you the the the, the actual benefits right here and right now. Mm. Uh, but that's not that's not hard. It, it's not like it's very expensive uh, implementing open APIs or APIs. Uh, so, mm. but you have to do do it that way. At least that's the way we do it. Yeah, that question always comes up early. How are we going to get a return on this? Where, how are we going to make money from this? Those are very early conversations. Uh, more questions from the audience? Uh, I, would, I was wondering about with the post Nord example that uh, what about with the so then you guys have got the track and trace data how much do you mix that with other data sources like weather data or traffic congestion data and those sorts of public sources are you doing are you guys doing that a, a bit internally or no we are not but we should we have we, we, we could um, for internal use we could use a lot of, of um, uh, kind of external data resources to improve like our own businesses with all the the cars driving around in the city and the traffic and weather situations and and um, you have a lot of data that we could explore to try to find the benefits but we are not doing that today right. and is that uh, is that a cultural uh, is that a cultural barrier or a resource? Is it because you don't have the resources for it or is it because um, you don't have the organisational culture that has a big data mindset yet? Or It's just that we are a bit, we are a bit behind. 
Mm. So we are getting there, uh, but we are not a first mover in, in, in this area. So um, we're trying to learn as much as possible now and try to kind of uh, do this really well. And, and the good thing of being late is that actually things work much better now than yeah. they used to do. So that, that's one, one of the good, th good things. Mm. So do you envision yourselves doing that and mashing that up yeah. with all these other data yeah. or outside innovators doing that more than yourselves now or both? We, we, I have been experimenting with weather data, for instance, and we are also, of course, looking for a good source of traffic data, obviously, because we are out and, and running with, with all those thousands of cars. That, that will be a part of what we're doing in the future, for sure. But there is also a lack of, of good data sources for kind of traffic information, for instance, in... in I know US do, do have a, a quite good sources, UK too, but here uh, there's no national kind of bank for, for, for this kind of data. Hmm. Right. Um, and then, so Travis, with your experience with working with external customers, it seems like one of the things that's an underlying thing that's come up today is that uh, APIs, there was the initial wave with where they were taken up by startups and uh, and entrepreneur with and businesses with an entrepreneurial spirit. Now, as the API field is maturing, these enterprises are getting on board. But enterprises are back to the sort of situation that um, uh, Kenneth from Postnord's describing, which is right back at the beginning again, as far as up, that uptake. How are you seeing that with the sorts of customers who are coming to you, or the uh, and the sort of businesses that you're engaging with? So a lot of times it, it, it kind of starts from the ground level as a sort of grassroots effort where they end up building an API for something else that the business needs and not even realizing it is an API. And then sort of doubling back and saying, oh, wait a sec, we're opening up all this data. What do the lawyers think? Or we had to expose this information. So what, what, what are the consequences strategically uh, from a security point of view or, or these sorts of things? So a lot of the... The, the people who have presented at Nordic APIs conferences who are present, um, providing APIs, uh, almost the majority of them have started at the grassroots just launching an API not even realizing it, and then sort of doubling back and trying to, okay, let's, let's do this more strategically and, and more thought through. Okay, cool. And then, so maybe just, um, what about the toolkit that you guys might have? What do you find that you have to constantly bring out? There's a couple of the presentation slides you're always using when you're talking with um, people for the first time. Uh, is, is, there a, is there one about security? Is there one about what is an API or? Uh, I think the one of what, what is an API and what could it be used for, maybe that's, that's the one. And then apart from that, we have quite, we have curiosity, curiosity people want to do this, but they're not really sure what it is. So that's, uh, but that's my, my, I think my, prime tool. We do have good people working with it and, and uh, everyone is eager on the IT side. And bring out the practical examples. I usually start with still the cons consumer side because that's very easy to grasp and, and uh, you can just tell the, the Twitter story or, or the, the, the Netflix story or something like that. <clears throat> then you, 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 you construct your own examples. What if we had this? Then someone could do this. Mm. And you just get people thinking about it. That wouldn't that be pretty cool? Yeah. So, um, yeah. And and one thing I like to to definitely underscore when I talk about APIs is that it really is unavoidable. It's it's do or die. You are either going to do this or you're not going to be around in a decade. It's just the way the world is going. If if we don't uh, expose information over APIs, we. I don't believe the business will have that same position uh, that they have in a decade from now. They need to do so in a secure way that they can manage the risks associated with opening up that data, uh, but they must do it. Okay, wonderful. That's a great note to finish on, actually. So uh, anyone with one final question? No? Okay, look, thanks a lot, everyone, and thanks for our panelists for... Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.